Another item that I'd like to bring up relating to the heat exchanger is this heat exchanger, which is located right here, right here, must be in good condition. We have fire, we have products of combustion going through these tubes. If for some reason they ran too hot, if for some reason there was any type of failure in these tubes, like a crack, then the products of combustion would be leaving this crack, opening in the heat exchanger, and going into your home. What could be going in there? Carbon monoxide. The same carbon monoxide that comes out of the exhaust pipe of a car. Unfortunately, every year we have fatalities and unreported injuries of carbon monoxide poisoning. This is a carbon monoxide detector that you can buy at hardware stores, Lowe's, Home Depot. Many people do not buy this detector because it may run 40 or $50, where a smoke detector may only be $10, okay? But you really need a, 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 a carbon monoxide, a CO detector. Where do you put it? If you're only gonna put one in, put it in a room where the people are gonna be in most. Particularly if you have children, they're gonna be in there most of the day. These carbon monoxide sensors will alarm way before you're in, pr in trouble. It will alarm and show you the parts per million of carbon monoxide that are in the air. So it'll give you a chance to take some action on it. it and it will say, you know, you're reaching a point where maybe you could have headaches. And then it escalates on up to a very serious situation. Okay, so a carbon monoxide sensor is something I wish everybody would buy, maybe two. Maybe make it a Christmas gift or a birthday gift but they're very, very important. I, I, I just wish everyone had one. Smoke detectors, we're kind of online there. Most people have one or multiple smoke detectors. Then when you get to the operation of the furnace itself, I'm gonna have to just say, go with a trained service technician and a company of your choice. Talk to your neighbors, Research it, go with somebody that you feel comfortable with who can come out and check the, the, the proper operation of your furnace. There's a lot of things to check. Let me just show you here. Most of the new furnaces have printed circuit boards that are relatively complex. In addition to the heat exchanger we're talking about. In addition to the burners and the gas valve. So really, I, I would rather people don't go in, remove the panels, and try to service their own furnace. I would rather they, they concentrate on the airflow. How much air? Are you getting good air? Is the quality of the air good? And then in conclusion, I'd like to say that this heating system is part of a total system that includes your air conditioning. So if you think you need to replace your heating system for any reason, also talk to your contractor about the air conditioning system that is an integral part of it. That may be the time to do that. And when you think of changing your, he your heating system or your furnace, you can replace it with an 80% furnace or a 90 plus percent of furnace. And let me just tell you what the difference is here. The temperature of the flue gas coming out of this 80% furnace, which is in a large, large majority of our homes, it's in my home now, and I'll be replacing it. The temperature of this flue gas runs three to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's gas, hot gas, that you're paying for that's going out your roof. And if we had the opportunity here, we could turn this on and we put a, a thermometer in there and it'd be probably 350 degrees. The temperature of the hot gas going out of this unit is about 100 degrees. 100 degrees. So look at what you're saving. Not a tremendous cost difference there. So as the price of our energy goes up and you look at making decisions on replacing this equipment, do consider a high efficiency unit. And do consider how it's going to integrate with your air conditioning system because let me make a quick note about your air conditioning system. 
Right now, most of the air conditioning systems out there have a standard efficiency ratio of 10. 10. Now, most of the ones that you're buying are 13 to 14. Much more efficient. You can do the math on that. Much more efficient. Also, your system in your home now is probably what's called an R22 system. It's using R22 refrigerant. Those units will no longer be made by, I believe, 2010. And the refrigerant itself will no longer even be available by 2020. There will probably be replacement refrigerant, but the industry is recommending that the air conditioning systems be changed to R410A. So this is part of a system. Pay close attention to it. Take care of your enclosure of your home first. Then take care of your airflow enough airflow and the quantity of the airflow and then look at your system as a whole. We had a question and the question is when you buy your pleated filters and they have a little arrow on them this is the purpose of the arrow. The arrow is telling you the direction of the airflow so if it is an upflow furnace and the air comes out of your ceiling, then the, you would install it where the arrow was pointing upward, okay? If, you're, if you are, if it's in the furnace, if, it's in the, if the filter is in the ceiling, the air is going to be going that way and the arrow would be going that way. The air goes the direction of the arrow. Okay, another thing you'll notice on those filters is on the leaving side of that furnace, it has a little wire mesh, okay? And that's to make that filter more stable when it starts collecting a lot of lint and dust. It can't get through. It can't be pulled through. Some filters are so bad, they just get pulled on into the ductwork system or into the furnace, which we don't want to happen. So the arrow goes in the direction of the airflow. I would not recommend you take these furnace panels off. There should be no way that any debris can get in here. Uh, I'd recommend that you clean around the furnace. You keep the area clean around the furnace. Uh, and I'd recommend you clean the filter. Now, if your furnace has the filter in it, or adjacent to it, then you may have to get into it. But I'm not recommending for the homeowner to remove the panels as you see here. There's really nothing that the homeowner should do in here unless that homeowner lights an old standing pilot, okay? Which I'm not gonna go over right now. And he would, he would have to get in there and light it similar to a, a hot water heater. That's called a standing pilot. Uh, you don't see those anymore, but again, there are a lot of them in, in, in Oklahoma City. And uh, in that case, they may have to remove this panel and go in and hold the gas valve down and let the pilot run for a couple minutes, then let it up and turn it on. Uh, here's what I'd recommend. I'd recommend pre-cooling season and pre-heating season. It's a real value with a company that you like. Sometimes that is a function of people right in that neighborhood. They work with a, a certain company, maybe even a certain technician that knows your system. It's nice when the same technician can come back, back out. But what you can do in the summertime, and the technician can show you, you can clean your own condenser outside with a water hose when you're working in the yard. It feels pretty good. You, know, you can just clean that off and they'll show you how to do it because that's where you're rejecting all the heat from your home. So really, really you've got a pre preheating and a pre-cooling observation or inspection that should be done. And then your filters, uh, it depends upon how much dust your home is producing. They can produce a lot, particularly in the bedroom areas where there's a lot of linen and clothing. And uh, some people can get away with it every six months, but to be safe, you should do every quarter or every three months.